Hello friends and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be transforming this beat up mid-century mahogany dresser into this. If you want to see how I do that, keep watching. Starting with the obvious, this piece has a lot of dings and scrapes, some missing veneer and I don't know what the heck happened to that leg. <laughs> Another issue is that the drawers don't seem to be lining up. I'm going to have a better look at that, but you can see here they're just banging into each other. Often when you see that, the drawers are just in the wrong spots, but I'm going to have a better look here in a minute. I've got some serious work to do, so let's get into it. My name is Angie, and I'm the one behind Transcend Furniture Gallery, a business created from the love of vintage furniture and the desire to take broken, dated and unloved things and turn them into modern treasures. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. Getting started with the drawers here, I'm going to pull them out, remove the hardware. When you're removing a knob or pull with more than one screw, make sure you hang on to it while you're taking the second screw out. Sometimes they have a tendency to spin around and scrape the wood and you definitely don't want that. The finish on this piece is unbelievably thick, like crazy thick. So even though I'm going to scrape it, I'm going to put some stripper on it first to just help me out a little bit with that removal. I've poured a bit too much stripper here for just one drawer, so I'm just going to push those together and transfer some of that over so I'm not wasting any of it. Removing the finish on these top drawers is going to be a little bit harder than the flat one, so I'm just making sure that the stripper goes right up to those little ridges. And scrapey scrapey here with the wood scraper. Normally I use a putty knife if the finish is soft and coming off easily. Like I said, this finish is insanely thick and this is kind of the only way to go. And even with this, it's difficult, but we're getting through it. If you decide to give one of these a try, you have to be super careful with it. Go very easy around the edges. You can also use a metal card scraper instead of a handheld one like this, if you prefer. Same thing here on the drawers. This is a heck of a workout, let me tell ya. <laughs> I'm using a medium abrasive pad here with some mineral spirits to help remove the last of the stripper gunk from the top. It's also going to allow me to have a better look at the wood grain, see if there's any stains or discolorations or damage. True story here, and don't get mad at me, <laughs> but I actually don't love the color of mahogany. Because of that, I'm going to be staining it to give it a little bit more of a walnut feel, but first we have to sand it. This is what the top looks like post stripping, post mineral spirits, pre sanding. So looking good, I don't see any major damage on the top. I think it's going to sand up really nicely. And these are the drawers also pre sanding. There's still the odd little bit of residue. There's a few little veneer spots I need to patch. So I'm going to do that first with some mahogany wood filler. This will help them be less noticeable once it's stained. I'm actually painting the sides, so I'm using a different wood filler here. It doesn't have to be that red mahogany because no one's going to see it under the paint. Okay, and we need to address this. This is not sitting in properly. It's come unglued, and I have a feeling this is part of the reason those top drawers weren't aligning properly and closing. I'm just gonna pop it out, have a look, and you can see here the dried glue. I have to remove that before I put any new glue on it because the new glue is not gonna stick to the old glue. It's only gonna stick to raw wood. I've applied a pretty liberal amount here. I'm just going to make sure that it's covering all the surfaces. And then I'm going to put this piece back in, screw it, and clamp it up to dry. And I'm just going to put one of these super handy clamps on here, and that's going to stay on for a few hours. I'm going to make sure to wipe away the excess glue because it's a pain in the arse to sand it off later. <laughs> Trust me. But, and this is important, before I let that glue 
Harden, I need to make sure this drawer is going to sit in perfectly. Sometimes things just get wonky in old furniture and if you don't test that out you may end up with a freshly glued joint that's very strong but then your drawer doesn't fit so always make sure everything's going to work before you let any glue harden anywhere. So because I've gotten most of the finish off, I'm jumping straight into a fairly fine grit here. I'm doing 220 and then I'm going to skip to 320 for my final. Normally I stain after sanding to about 220, but in this case I don't want the stain to penetrate too much. The finer you sand something, the less the stain will be able to penetrate. I usually speed up the sanding process on these videos, but I wanted to show you in this one clip this is the speed you should be working at. One of the most common issues with sanding is that people just go too fast with the sander and then they get those little squiggle marks. Slowing down, less pressure, and the right grit is really going to help minimize that. Looking good, this top sanded up beautifully. Doing a little 180 grit scuff sand on the sides before painting. It's just going to help the paint adhere and make sure the surface is smooth before painting. And I'm just making sure these are smooth, everything looks good. We're going to tip her over and see if we can figure out this foot. <laughs> I had added some of the same wood filler as the missing veneer part, so I'm just going to sand it smooth and hopefully it will look like nothing ever happened here. I'm using Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Coal Black. I'll link to it in the description box below if you want to check it out. The first coats are always a little bit streaky. I'm going to be doing three coats on this piece. This is a general finishes product. It's a gel stain called Nutmeg. It's one of my favorite colors to use on Walnut. And I'm hoping that even though this is mahogany, that this stain will give it a little bit more of a Walnut feel when I'm finished. It's an oil-based product, super easy to use. Wipe it on, wipe it off. <laughs> That's it. Nope, I didn't nod off. <laughs> Just didn't have anything to say in those few seconds there. <laughs> Maybe you nodded off, I don't know. <laughs> Kudos to whoever is still with us. <laughs> so my plan for these original poles was initially to polish them, but you can see here, I know it's a little bit hard to see in the sunlight, but they're not solid brass, they're plated, and some of the finish is coming off. So I thought I'd give it a try with the polish just to see how it turns out and while it definitely looks cleaner I wasn't loving the look so I ended up switching to my favorite metal spray it's seriously the best stuff I've ever used in terms of adhesion and durability and it'll just give them a much more polished look if you're interested in this spray I'll also link to that in the description box home stretch now I went back and forth quite a bit on what to top coat this with whether it was Danish oil. I was going to use lacquer, but I ended up going with hemp oil. I'm going to be using two coats of hemp oil on it. It's a nice natural product that nourishes the wood and once it cures, it's actually quite durable. What I like about it in comparison to a super hard finish is that it's fairly easy to refresh it. So in a few years, if the piece is looking a little bit dull, you can just add some more hemp oil. It's super easy to use. You literally just wipe it on, let it absorb a little bit, and then wipe it off. And as you can see, it's absolutely stunning. So I'm just going to wipe off the excess oil, add the hardware, and show you guys what this piece looks like now. 